This is the fifth and final installment of the Introduction to MANOVA, and it'll uh, take you through an overview of all of the steps that are taken and a little bit of information on some SPSS output interpretation. So, steps to conduct a MANOVA. So, consider there's essentially three steps. I've been talking about them in this, um, but the first one is really a pre-step um, that hasn't been covered before, and that is all of the assumptions. So make sure you are paying close attention that you are getting all the assumptions checked out um, and that they're working. Then step one is the omnibus MANOVA. So again, if there is a, if it's a one-way MANOVA and there's only one independent variable and two or more dependent variables, this is pretty simple. You're going to have one Wilkes lambda. You're going to have, um, you know, and that's it. There's nothing else here. But if you have a two-way or a three-way MANOVA, then you're going to need to look at your interactions first um, and then look at your main effects. So you'll have multiple MANOVA results if you have a two-way or three-way type of MANOVA or higher. Then step two is to break it down and look at the ANOVA level for each DV. And again, if you have a two-way, you first need to look at your interactions and then look at your main effects. And finally, you go on to step three only for those ANOVAs in step two that were significant. For any ANOVA in step two that's significant, you go on and do either a post hoc type comparison, simple effects, plan comparisons, trend analyses, all those types of things um, as you move forward. But you don't go to step three if your ANOVA was not significant. You stop at that point. Um, for an example, if you're going to look at the effects of therapist training, whether they receive a eclectic type clinical training or psychodynamic training or behavioral training, so our independent variable is training and there's three levels to it, and then the type of medication that the client received, whether an SSRI or a placebo, and so you have a two levels there. You have um, a two by three uh, MANOVA, and then from that we have the Beck Depression Index and a symptom checklist filled out by relatives as our dependent variable. Um, and you can see as you go through, okay, my independent variables are therapist training and medication type. It is a three by two. Um, it's listed that way. Most of the time you'd actually write it out two by three, putting the smaller number first. Um, it doesn't really matter which one goes first. And then you have two dependent variables to be checking out. In step one, what you're going to be looking for most commonly is Wilkes Lambda. You will see an SPSS output. It'll give you Hotelling's Trace. It'll give you Palau's Criterion. And it will also give you Roy's GCR. Um, Roy's GCR is only used for something called Roy's Step Down um, type thing, typically. So you don't look at that from my classes. But Wilkes Lambda is the default. And Palau's is used if you have questions about boxes M or the assumption of variance, covariance, matrix. If you only have two levels on your independent variables, all four of those will be identical numbers, and you will see identical results on them. But they run things just slightly differently if you have three or more levels to your independent variable. Wilkes Lambda is the most popular, and uh, Palau's Trace is the backup plan. Then your step two in your ANOVA, the most popular option to do here is the univariate ANOVAs. Sometimes people don't do all of them, particularly if they not really have a research question relevant to all of the questions. But, you know, most people are running things and kind of looking across the board um, at everything. So you examine the results just like you've done in previous training in ANOVA. If you have many analyses you're doing here and you're looking at lots and lots of p-values in one data set, you may need to do something called a modified Bonferroni. You can look that up um, elsewhere to find out how to do that, but you may need to adjust the p-value down. So it wouldn't be p.05. You might find your p go down to 0.04 or 0.04. 0.03 or even lower, depending on how many analyses you are doing to try to avoid um, error. So if step two is significant, you go on to step three. If any of them, any of the ANOVAs are not significant for that ANOVA, you do not go on to its step three. So every ANOVA has its own possible step three. Finally, in step three, we look at, at um, if we have significant interactions, you look at simple effects. That's one option um, to use. It's a common one. And if you have main effect significance in step two, then you're going to look at post hoc, something like a Tukey or a Bonferroni. Don't get this confused. The Bonferroni adjustment is different than the post hoc Bonferroni. Bonferroni was a very prolific statistician. Lots of things named after. 
So this is one way to do simple effects within SPSS. And you will see here that you have um, gender by minority classification. They give you the mean for each of the groups on the two DVs. And then you have some confidence intervals on the right. And essentially, one thing you can do is just to see if the means fall within or outside of the bounds of confidence intervals for other groups. So on current salary, we have Caucasian females as the first line making $26,706 a year, roughly. So we can look down the line for the upper and lower bounds, and they are not different than minority females. They are different than Caucasian males, and they are different also than minority females. Males. So if you look there, you'll see um, that 26,706 falls in between Oh, actually, it doesn't. It's just outside of um, of female. So you see 18,477, and then next to it, 27,647. So what you have is, um, actually, no, 26,706 is just within the upper bound for minority females. So they are, it's within the confidence interval for minority females. So the two female groups are. Um, but for males, you'll see that it's definitely lower. Um, the, bound, the bounds for males are about 42,000 to 46,000. And minority males, the bounds run from about 27,000 to about 36,000. And so it's just below on the male one. Um, interestingly, this is not a perfect situation. It's not a perfect solution. For instance, you'll see for minority females, their mean is 23,062, but that actually falls outside of the bounds for Caucasian females on the confidence intervals. So um, are f the f two female groups different from each other? Um, you might have to go to some other kind of test, which I'm not going to cover here. There are other things you can learn um, on how to do that if you were to face this with your data, um, or to just realize it's right on the bound and you might not um, want to call them different since it's right on the bound if you're trying to be conservative with your data, or just present it to the, to the researchers. So. You would do that for each of them and see if they fall within the confidence interval levels as one way of examining differences between these groups. Now, these groups, remember, are the interactions. This is for the interaction. You would need to run a whole nother set of analyses for the main effects, but the post hocs for those are generally done fairly easily by SPSS, and it will give you the output for you. This one is when you have to interpret. Um, if you do end up doing something else, you'll find the mean scores here, I think, in the standard error are quite helpful. Um, and helping you to calculate that. Finally, as, you're, um, close, as we're closing out our MANOVA um, series here, I wanted to make sure that it's clear as you read all these different numbers what you would be looking for, whether you were to have no effect or an effect. So um, the between groups variance would be small if you have no effect, but large if you had an effect, whereas the within group variance would be large for no effect and smaller for the effect. Right? So that has to do with that. Um, in Wilkes Lambda, you would have a large, if you have a large Wilkes Lambda, you have no effect. And if you have a small Wilkes Lambda, that means you have probably an effect happening. Then for your p-value, usually is p.05. So for that, we're going to have a small p-value for an effect. And finally, for our eta, so that's our effect size, a larger effect size would be more effects. Finally, for a portfolio activity, I recommend that you take an example of a 2 by 3 Mankova with two dependent variables and try to walk through all of these steps that you have been presented with, both in this video and in some of the previous videos, to make sure that you're able to walk it all through before you start on the SPSS portion of the um, training for MANOVA.